and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing our own moon, and specifically one of the bigger resolutions of the biggest mystery of the moon. Why is it that the side that we see right here, the so-called near side of the moon, looks so different from the so-called far side, with both sides appearing as if they're on some kind of a different object? With the near side appearing much darker, also appearing much newer, containing a lot less craters, and having these large spots known as mare on the surface, and the far side being almost entirely different, as if it's basically a different object. It has way more craters, it has very different composition on the surface, it's a lot brighter, and it doesn't contain anything similar to mare. With the side profile right here, even showing us almost like a delineation line separating one side from the other. So why exactly is it like this? And why is it that no other moon in the solar system resembles anything like this? Or if we were to look at the other relatively similar in size moons, the ones from Saturn and Jupiter, they obviously all look different, but none of them contain similar features, and more importantly, if we were to look at them from the other side, they would not look dramatically different. They don't contain similar features to the moon that we have. And although they obviously possess their own mysteries and their own features on the surface that even today we're still trying to answer, none of them are that extreme. And so that's what one of the recent studies, and actually a lot of previous studies, have tried to answer. And this recent study does a pretty good job at telling us what most likely happened to the moon billions of years ago to create such a dramatic difference. And here we do have to define a few things before we start. We obviously have to talk a little bit more about some of the surface features known to us. So first of all, these differences are not just visual. As a matter of fact, some of the recent examinations of rocks brought from the moon, including some of the rocks collected by the Apollo mission, discovered that there's also an actual compositional difference as well. For example, here is a concentration map of a radioactive metal known as thorium. The metal that, just like uranium, is sometimes used in a lot of different types of nuclear production. This map was actually created quite a long time ago by the famous NASA lunar prospector that was able to quite accurately map the surface of the moon, discovering a lot of different elements. And if you look at this image, you'll notice that there seem to be mostly two major spots on the moon that seem to have thorium at much higher concentrations than everywhere else. And it's actually not just thorium, it's a lot of different elements. Things like potassium, various types of rare earth elements, phosphorus, various really important minerals, and even things like uranium as well. And altogether, this location today is known as CREEP, which is an acronym for a lot of different things that have been discovered in this region. With K being potassium, REE being rare earth elements, and P being phosphorus. As a matter of fact, the discovery of CREEP back in the days excited a lot of scientists, suggesting that maybe there is quite a lot of mining possibilities here, and maybe the moon could one day become a new mining colony. Although I guess we're still far from that being a reality. But if you look at this map, you'll notice that there's another location in the right image on the far side of the moon. But what exactly is there? We'll get back to this in one minute. First, let me add one more thing about the creep facing planet Earth. This really large location, if you were to look at it in the visual light, would more or less correspond to the location of the so-called Mare, the ancient magma oceans that very likely existed on the moon for millions and millions of years and were a result of an extremely large volcanic eruption across the entire surface, with several papers on lunar volcanism presenting different maps showing us that all of this was happening for billions and billions of years. And today is believed that the main reason for this volcanism was really the presence of a lot of these radioactive elements, such as thorium and uranium, which essentially usually produce a lot of extra heat, and usually end up increasing the amount of volcanism in a certain region. We've actually discussed this in one of the older videos on the channel, which you can find right there or in the description below. And so, the location of the creep coincides with the location of a lot of ancient volcanism, and all of these events seem to be kind of connected. But the mystery and the question here was always, why is it that there was so much of these elements in that one particular location on the moon, and why is it specifically in that location facing planet Earth, the location known as Creep? And also, are all of these mysteries of the moon somehow connected? Is there a reason why we detect certain types of composition on the location closest to planet Earth, compared to the location on the far side of the moon? In other words, did something happen to the moon a long time ago that might have created all of this? With the obvious question from the recent paper being yes. 
And this connects us to that other thing that I was about to mention. That other tiny spot you see on the right, on the far side of the moon, that also seems to have a little bit of thorium and a little bit of other creep materials. Here's what all this looks like in visual light, and you might notice that there is some kind of a dark patch in that region. The region that you see right here, very close to the lunar south pole. And what this map shows you is an actual topography. This is basically the map showing us that the area here is much deeper than the area around it. And there is also a kind of a ring formation around this. And you can probably guess what this is and what created this. This is a representation of a crater, a very large crater. The largest lunar crater known to us. The crater that's thousands of kilometers across. The crater that's known as the South Pole Aitken Basin and a structure that's approximately 2500 kilometers across contains the deepest area on the moon that's about 6 kilometers below the surface as well as the highest peaks on the moon that surround the crater, around 8 kilometers in height. These mountains are sometimes referred to as the Leibniz Mountains. And today it's believed that something really massive crashed on the moon approximately 4.2 to 4.3 billion years ago to create this enormous structure. Representing one of the major events in the lunar history, the event that dramatically shifted everything here. But this recent study also suggests that there is a connection between this event and, of course, what we see on the surface of the near side, including the creep and the increased concentration of everything in that location with the scientists behind the recent paper using their own model to run various computer simulations in order to determine how the material in the moon would propagate if there was a really massive impact, potentially coming from different angles and hitting different parts of the moon. And in pretty much all of the scenarios they used, the conclusion was also relatively similar. Every large impactor eventually reshuffled the inner structure of the moon, increasing the convection as a result. And once all of this was completed in a few million, or actually a few hundred million years, it would result in a slightly higher composition of specific types of elements on the other side of the impact. In this case, that would be in the location where we find creep today, which also naturally corresponds to the largest mare on the moon. With the idea here being pretty simple to understand, any massive impact would result in a major heat plume propagating through the internal structure of the moon, which would then deposit various amounts of surface structures and surface elements with most likely higher concentrations on the direct opposite side of the impact. With all of the materials that might have been concentrated in a single region eventually being redistributed through a kind of a wave process that would slowly move everything across to the other side. Something that the scientists in this case refer to as the induced convection. And during that time of this massive impact, it's sort of expected that the moon very likely became extremely hot and potentially even molten. And because of this, the internal structure of the moon ended up having so much extra convection that did not exist there otherwise. And so by delivering all of these materials from across the moon to the specific spot that you see in this image, it then created perfect conditions for further volcanism to begin as a lot of these radioactive materials, such as thorium and uranium, started to produce more heat than was produced otherwise in other regions, eventually leading to billions of years of active volcanism in those specific spots that resulted in the lunar mare we have today. But naturally, this is just one single paper for now, and there could be other explanations as well, even though this is honestly one of the better ones we've heard in a while. But it will most likely take actual samples from, for example, the Chang'e 4 mission that's currently in that location of the basin in the South Pole, in order for the scientists to really figure out what happened to our beautiful moon billions of years ago to make it so extremely unique and so different from everything else in the solar system. For now, it's a really good theoretical explanation with a really good model, but it needs to have physical proof. And so once we have some more proof or some other explanation in regards to our moon, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.